in increments of fear. The ocean is an object of no small terror. There are three sorts of people. Those who are alive, those who are dead, and those who are at sea. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where first off, thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up in force to our St. Jude charity livestream last week. With your help, we were able to raise $1,330,000 for children with childhood cancer. $1.3 million in just 10 hours of time. That is money that is going to a purely good cause, saving the lives of children and kicking cancer's butt once and for all. I know we said a lot during the live stream, but in case you weren't there. Thank you guys, it's really awesome. It makes such a difference. It's literally buying back the lives of children. All this money that is being raised right now is going to save more kids that are coming to the doors to send you. So thank you guys. Thank you for being there. Thank you for showing the world that being a YouTuber or being a fan of YouTube, being a gamer, none of those things have to be dirty words. That is the power of communities united to make a change. And that's pretty darn incredible. And then along with raising that amazing amount of money, I also got myself dunked, egged, and shaved by some of my best friends both on and off YouTube. All in all, it was pretty amazing across the board. So thank you for being there and thank you for helping to make December 3rd the single proudest day of my YouTube career. So now let's talk about pirates. Yar. You see, last time we started our deep dive into the underwater mysteries of Minecraft's overworld, we first turned our attention to the Guardian and Elder Guardian mobs, pointing out that they definitely don't seem to be organic, fish-like creatures. From their bodies composed of prismarine block, to their inability to suffocate when left on land, from dropping crystals, to launching eye lasers with decidedly non-fishy anatomy, these creatures of the deep appear to be more man-made than fish-made, almost as if they were intended to be a security device for the ocean monuments that they call their home, which obviously then led us to start exploring the ocean monuments, buildings that, at least in my estimation, appear to have religious significance. The ziggurat-style architecture, the 23 support columns, the mysterious cube of gold hidden in the middle of the building, all of it pointing towards some sort of memorial dedicated to honoring a higher power. But you'll notice that during that last episode, I left things on a bit of a cliffhanger, leaving one key question unanswered. Who made these things? If the Guardians and the Elder Guardians are some sort of machine or security device, well, someone must have created them. Same thing with the Ocean Monument. If these massive structures really were built as religious structures for god worship, well, who built them to worship those gods in the first place? The answer might at first seem pretty obvious, right? The Drowned. The underwater zombies that swim around throwing their tridents at you and making underwater exploration just a big ol' headache. Because they're the only humanoids underwater, it seems like it clearly Clearly must be them, right? And it is! Or, at least, it's my theory that they're the ones who built these structures. But not for the reasons that you would expect. You see, there's a lot to show the history of the Drowned. 
their connection to these monuments and how they became the Drowned in the first place. Spoiler alert, these guys aren't just zombies who fell into the water, even if that's one of the ways that they spawn nowadays. No, the Drowned were, at least at one point in their history, land-faring people, who, like so many of the other mobs in Minecraft, underwent a horrific catastrophe. Let's see why and what it was. Let's start at the end of our story and work backwards. To begin, how could we possibly know that it was the Drowned who built the ocean monuments and the guardians that protect them? Two major reasons. First, the Drowned are immune to guardian and elder guardian attacks. If the guardians are indeed protecting a holy sanctuary, well, you'd assume they'd protect it from all different types of intruders, not just us as the player. And yet, the Drowned mob gets a pass in the eyes, or should I say, the eye of the guardian. This only makes sense if the Drowned are somehow connected to the monuments and or the initial construction of those guardians. It would be pretty darn stupid to install a security system and then not write in an exception for you and the people that you trust. This tells us then that the drowned are approved to come and go as they please while outsiders, like us as the player character, are actively discouraged from sneaking in and desecrating this ancient place of worship. Our second key piece of evidence is gold. Now, we already covered last episode the mysterious blocks of gold found hidden in the middle of the ocean monuments. This, in and of itself, itself is bizarre since the entire rest of the structure is just varieties of prismarine block and sea lantern. But if you look at other ruins left behind under the ocean and the loot that is found inside of those ruins, you see it again. More gold. Gold in the form of nuggets, gold in the form of apples, gold in the form of helmets. So gold and underwater structures seem to be connected. And wouldn't you know it, gold also happens to be one of the four drop items of the drowned, with the other three being rotten flesh, tridents, and nautilus shells. And this gold connection immediately differentiates the drowned from normal zombies. Normal zombies sink when they're put underwater, and they drop not gold, but iron. So even though drowned do spawn from zombies that are dropped in the water, that isn't where their origin story lies, at least from a lore perspective. And that's the story that I'm most interested in today. So between being given security clearance by the Guardians, as well as being the only underwater creatures carrying a key resource that's found inside those structures, as well as their chests, seems pretty darn clear like the drowned are our builders. It also begins to tell us that the drowned, as well as all these underwater buildings, might not have always been underwater. Look closer at the ocean ruin loot lists. What do you see stand out? Wheat and rotten flesh. Food was being stored inside of these chests for the people who once lived here. The meat has been kept in the chest for so long that it's gotten rotten, and the wheat, well, it just doesn't really go bad in this game. But if the drowned truly did build these structures, which it seems like they did, why would underwater zombie creatures need food? Heck, why would any any underwater society, living or dead, be growing and storing wheat in its chests, which, in case you know nothing about farming, is definitely not an underwater crop. This thing ain't no cranberry. Let's put a pin in that, because now let's look at the ocean monuments. I made a joke last episode about the monuments tending to spawn with sponge rooms built into them. Huge rooms with bunches of wet sponges just hanging on the ceiling. Haha, <laughs> isn't that weird? Insert joke about a loofah room, let's talk about religion the rest of the episode. But what I glossed over for the sake of the time last episode, and what I want to point out now is that those aren't just naturally occurring sponges. It's not like you wander around the ocean monument and just find sponges in the environment around you. No, these are dedicated rooms for housing the sponge as a unique resource. Now, for those of you who don't know the specific use of a sponge in Minecraft, it can suck up up to 65 water blocks before becoming a wet and therefore useless sponge. It's most often used for drying out areas of the map, but again, why would an underwater civilization, an underwater ruin, need a storehouse of things used for sucking up water? The answer is, it doesn't. An underwater ruin doesn't need anything like that. But a ruin that's above the ground and starting to sink under the water absolutely does. So what am I trying to say? What happened here? What does some wheat and some sponges tell us about this civilization? Well, the evidence seems to suggest that we have ourselves a civilization that started on the surface, but that eventually got washed under the water. The question then becomes, whether this was the result of a major natural disaster like a tsunami or just slowly rising tides. To me, I'd say it was that latter option. The fact that sponges were being used in the ocean monument as a means of keeping it dry suggests that they were trying
trying to prolong the drowning of everything as long as possible before it became too late. On a side note here, I know that there's a larger Minecraft theory out there that members of the fanbase have had for years where the whole Minecraft story is the end result of global warming, and while I'm not covering that particular theory today, you can definitely chalk the ocean monuments and the rising tides that swallowed the drowned civilization as pretty darn strong evidence supporting that hypothesis. But we're still not done, because the story of the drowned and their buildings doesn't just stop there. You see, the drowned didn't just dab a few sponges around and call it a day when they saw their world slowly being swallowed up by the powers of Neptune himself. If we look at the evidence, we learn every step of their story. A story that, like so many of the other mobs in this game, is a tragic one. One of desperately trying to survive in the face of certain death. And those hopes of survival ultimately being dashed, like waves along the rocks. This, my friends, is the complete story of the Drowned. The Drowned began on land as a normal seafaring civilization of fishermen and pirates. We know this because of their natural affinity with water, as well as the fact that they spawn equipped with both fishing rods and tridents, two common tools for ancient fishermen. And yes, although they've now been replaced with fishing spears, tridents were indeed an old school fishing tool used in ancient Greece as like a harpoon for nabbing some fish kebabs. That's why you always see Poseidon and Neptune depicted with a trident. Cue the more you know graphic. I say that this ancient ancient civilization were pirates as well, because the drowned mob is hostile towards villagers and wandering traders. This seems to indicate that a large part of their old culture involved raiding villages for their various supplies, and just old habits die hard. The loot you find in ocean ruined chests also seems to support this. Whereas most other chests throughout the game, in places like the nether fortresses or the end, have very consistent materials telling a very clear story of where a society was at a certain point in time and what resources they had to get there, the ocean ruined chests are kind of filled with a mishmash of stuff. You got some coal, gold, emeralds, some stone items mixed in there for some reason, leather. It's almost as if they've been taking whatever supplies they can grab from lots of different places around the world and just shoving them in their chests. Plus, I gotta admit, the drowned are hostile towards baby turtles. And no one nice is hostile towards baby turtles. So, they gotta be pirates. Putting aside the pirate business, we know for sure that they were a fishing and water-based culture that also happened to be deeply religious. But then the waters started to rise. Sure, they tried their best to hold back the floods using sponges, but it clearly wasn't enough. The waters weren't receding. If nothing was done, their whole world would be swallowed up by the very oceans their livelihoods were dependent upon. So, they did what they know best. Their best fishermen took off into the ocean. Why? Because they were in search for one thing, the heart of the sea. Notice inside ocean ruined chests that there's one additional item that really stands out, the buried treasure map. Now, this is important. There are three types of maps in the game of Minecraft. Ocean, Woodland, and Buried Treasure. The first two are fairly standard. They're sold by pretty much any cartographer. But the last one, the Buried Treasure map, can only be found in the remnants of the drowned civilization. Underwater ruins and shipwrecks. And that shipwreck detail is important. It tells us that these fishermen went out into the oceans on their boats, carrying these maps, looking for the treasure that was hidden on those maps. Now, buried treasure in Minecraft is pretty interesting. It can include everything from TNT to cake to chainmail armor. Basically, lots of different items can all be found inside of these hidden chests. And, like all buried treasure, most of the stuff you're gonna find is gonna be common boring everyday items that could probably just as easily have been crafted or bought at a store. But there's one unique item that can only be found inside these buried treasure chests. The heart of the sea. I suspect that this item was a bit of a myth to the drowned civilization. An old fisherman's tale about some mysterious object. An all-powerful blue pearl that could somehow allow a person to be master of the waves. I mean, consider this. In the game, the heart of the sea only has one functional use. Building conduits. These conduits bestow the effect Conduit Power. An area of effect status boost that gives anyone in the area who's touching water the skills of water breathing, night vision, and haste. Three skills that would be pretty darn essential for a society frantically rushing to fight against the rising tides, water breathing to survive the suffocating waves, night vision to work around the clock, making darkness just as productive as the day, and haste to speed up the building process as time continues to tick down and as the tides continue to rise. This was their hope, to find the mysterious and super rare heart of the sea object, the one thing that they believed could save them. 
and with the waters quickly rising into their homes, there was no place left to turn. No other solution. They had to find this object, myth or otherwise. So they sent out their ships by the hundreds, carrying their maps and fishing gear, desperately searching the waves, knowing that the lives of their loved ones hang in the balance. And as you can imagine, many aren't able to survive the journey. You'll notice that there are many shipwrecks sprinkled along the bottom of the ocean, broken husks of boats that contain those treasure maps, ships wrecked upon the rocks, or sucked down by whirlpools in the sea. Meanwhile, those left at home collect nautilus shells, the other ingredient necessary to build those conduits, ready to make the conduit once one person, one sailor finds that elusive heart of the sea, but it never comes. No one ever discovers it. Help never arrives back home. That's why we never find a naturally existing conduit in the world. And so this fishing society sinks. Their buildings and monuments get swallowed by the waves. The fishermen cast out and buried in the sea. They become, literally, the drowned. Without the conduit's power, they choke on the waters of the ocean. They become the undead that continue to haunt and fish in bodies of water to this day. That's why they swim at our speed. They don't have the power of haste. That's why they still carry their nautilus shells, waiting and ready for when someone finally finds that one last item that could have saved them. It's also why, when you, as the player, are finally able to find that heart of the sea and construct a conduit, the name of the achievement is an odd one. Moskstroman, the name of one of the world's strongest tidal currents that's located in Norway. It's odd, right? But in English, it's translated as the Maelstrom, a body of water so violent so turbulent that it inspired countless fictional authors. It's the raging currents that swallowed up Captain Nemo and Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's mentioned by Captain Ahab and Herman Melville's Moby Dick. And it's here, in Minecraft, as an achievement for doing what the drowned could never do. Survive the maelstrom of the rising waters, the waves that would rip apart a society, and finally conquer the waves. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.